Hello friends, how are you doing? So in this video, I am basically interested in discussing about the series AC circuit called as RC series combination. What is that? A resistor and a capacitor connected in series. So let me draw the circuit diagram. So if you draw the circuit diagram, you have a resistor which is connected in series with some capacitor and you are connecting this entire combination with a single phase AC source. AC source means it is producing some AC voltage. Let us say that instantaneous voltage equation is V of T is equal to Vm sin omega T. So this is the AC voltage that is being produced by this AC source. When you are giving voltage because the circuit is closed, you will get some current I of T. Where I of T is also an alternating and is a function of time. Let us say the value of resistance is R, value of capacitance is C. Every capacitor will have its own current opposing property called as capacitive reactance which is also called as XC. Like we are having resistor, capacitor can also oppose the flow of current without actually loss of energy. Whereas resistor will oppose the flow of current in the form of dissipating the energy in the form of heat. That means by wastage of energy. That is the reason why resistor is called as a real component. Whereas capacitor is an imaginary component like a devil. It does not require any food, but still it can do everything that it wants. Without power consumption, it is able to achieve this target of stopping the current. So when you are giving some voltage to series connected elements, in series you know the voltages will divide. So let us say the voltage divided by the capacitor is some voltage Vc. Similarly, the voltage shared or divided in the resistor is called as Vr. And the voltage is being dropped in resistance and capacitive reactance is due to the fact that current is flowing through it. So if I am supposed to write down the equation for Vr, Vr can be written as I into R and Vc can be written as I into opposing quantity Xc. So this is the result of Ohm's law. Since current is common in both the elements, I will try to draw a vector diagram by taking current as the reference. So this is the reference line which is at 0 degrees. Reference is always at 0 degrees. So on this 0 degrees line only, let us say my current vector is resting. Let us say this is the current vector i. Okay. On this current vector i, we have to see how the voltages across the two elements are behaving. Because the current is the same. So I want to find out the angle between the voltages and current in all the, all the elements. So these are the only two elements that is r and c. Current through r is i of t, same current i. And voltage to the resistance is vr. Voltage across the resistor is alone vr. As you already know, in a resistor, current and voltage are displaced by some angle, 0 degrees. So there is no displacement, both of them are, both of them are on each other, on each other like this. So how the current is there? In the same way, on the same on each other, on uh, overlapping on, a, on current and voltage only are having the voltage. That is the angular difference between voltage and current is 0 in resistor. Whereas in a capacitor, what happens in a capacitor? Current leads voltage by 90 degrees. Or in reverse you can write voltage lags current by 90 degrees. Isn't it? So where is the current? This is the current. What is the voltage across the capacitor? Vc. So it should lag current by 90 degrees. So let us say this is Vc voltage across the capacitor. So you see this is a vector which is on, along 0 degrees and this is another vector which is along how much? Minus 90 degrees. Isn't it? This angle is minus 90 degrees. So the resultant vector can be drawn from triangular law like this. Isn't it? So this vector which is resulting is called as the resultant vector V. So this resultant vector is nothing but the total applied voltage here, isn't it? The resultant supply voltage V itself is the resultant of Vr and Vc that is the supply voltage. And if you see the total voltage of the circuit and this is the total current of the circuit, the angle between them is some angle phi. So if I see, I can form a right angle triangle here, isn't it? And the length of this side is nothing but the length of the Vc only, isn't it? This is Vc only. And this is Vr. And length of this side is the total voltage V. So by applying phi the other theorem, the total voltage V can be found as Vr square plus Vc square. And you know the value of Vr and Vc, that is I into R and I into Xc. Upon solving that, you will get V is equal to I into under root R square plus Xc square. So this R square plus Xc square can also be written as impedance with Z. So V is equal to I into Z. Where V is the total voltage of the circuit, I is the total current in the circuit and Z is the total opposing quantity in the circuit including R and X. Okay? 
So always keep in mind when you are supposed to find the total voltage V, it is under root V R square plus V C square. But not, sir, like this is there now. I will apply K V R and I will write down total voltage V is equal to V R plus V C. No, this is absolutely wrong. This cannot be the case. Why? Because the V R and V C vectors which are there, they are displaced by some angle. So when the two vectors or two quantities are displaced by some angle, you cannot directly add them algebraically. You have to do vector addition. So vector addition is done in this way by Pythagoras theorem. So the next thing is, since V R is equal to I into R, since V is equal to I into Z, since V C is equal to I into H C, in all these three vectors I will cancel out R I, then I will get a triangle called as impedance triangle. What is that? Impedance triangle. So just copy that impedance triangle over this side. So you will have a side like this, which is equal to how much R. Okay, length of this side is R, and again downwards you are having some vector whose length is equal to the H C, and you are having a closing side whose length is equal to the total impedance. J, isn't it? This is only called as the impedance triangle. Now tell me what is the angle of R? What is the angle of R? R angle is zero degrees because it is on the baseline, isn't it? Now tell me what is the angle of H C? Angle of H C is how much? So if this is zero degrees line, X C is exactly ninety degrees downwards, isn't it? Ninety degrees. What is this ninety degrees? It is minus ninety degrees, isn't it? The angles below or zero, this side is minus, and above that one is positive angles that we have already discussed. So X C angle is minus ninety degrees, and similarly, what is the angle of Z? Angle of Z is some angle phi, is it? Is it it phi? Where phi is some angle which is less than zero degrees, which is greater than zero degrees. But uh, phi is a angle where it is greater than zero degrees but less, but less than ninety degrees, minus ninety degrees. That means the angle phi varies between zero to minus ninety degrees. Okay. So the angle of Z, the angle of Z is some angle minus phi. It is minus phi. Okay. Why? Because it is below the zero degrees reference line, isn't it? So if I am supposed to write in polar form, in polar form I can write resistance as R at an angle zero. X C can be written as X C at an angle how much minus 90 degrees, and Z can be written as some angle minus phi, isn't it? So X C at an angle minus 90 degrees in complex number notation I can write it as minus J X C, isn't it? Minus J X C because I have defined an operator imaginary or complex operator called J, where J is nothing but one at an angle 90 degrees, so plus 90 degrees. So whenever you are multiplying some angle with J. That particular number or that particular line will shift by plus 90 degrees like this. Suppose you are multiplying with minus j, then the value magnitude does not change, but the angle will be shifted by 90 degrees in downward direction or I can say in clockwise direction. Minus 90. So from this I can write x c can also be written as minus j x c. Suppose if you are writing the entire z because it is a complex number, you can write it as r minus j x c. R minus J X C. So this is where many students go wrong. Why? Because they are habituated for this expression that R is equal to that Z is equal to R plus J X L. Yes, this was valid in the case of an inductor. Why? Because in an inductor, the inductive reactance will lead the resistance. If you have seen the impedance triangle, the X L would be above R by plus 90 degrees. So therefore, you are adding plus J X L. But whereas it is minus J X C. And if I am supposed to find out the value of this phi, that will be equal to tan inverse of minus x c by r. Why minus x c? Because minus x c is the imaginary value and r is the real value. So this is the value of angle phi. And if you look at here, we are having v is equal to i into z. So if you write in polar form, let us say voltage is always at zero degrees. If you see here also, I have written V m sine omega t. That means voltage is at how much angle? Zero degrees. If voltage is at zero degrees. Current is at a some angle, let us say theta, and Z is lagging by some angle minus phi. That is, you have already seen. If I am writing current equation, current is at some angle theta is equal to V by Z zero degrees minus of minus phi, isn't it? So then this will come out to be I of theta I at an angle theta will be V by Z at an angle plus phi. Okay, that means I can write current in polar form some plus angle phi. 
So plus phi indicates so voltage is at zero degrees, current it's, uh, is at some vector, current vector is at some angle, plus phi radians, that means phi degrees, that means current is leading voltage, isn't it? Because in the capacitor circuit, current leads voltage. But this is not a pure capacitor circuit, it is R and C combination. Therefore, current will lead the voltage, but not by exactly 90 degrees. If it was only capacitor, current would have led exactly by 90 degrees, but it will uh, now lead less than 90 degrees, greater than 0 degrees, but leading is confirmed. And how much leading is given like this? So one very, very important concept that I want to discuss here is how to write angles in complex numbers for different type of loads. So you are having two different cases. One is RL, means the type of load or the type of circuit is an inductive circuit. And again, you are having RC, that means capacitive case, like what we are discussing now. So in a RL circuit, the impedance in polar form can be written as Z at an angle plus phi. Okay, Z at an angle plus phi, where this phi is given by tan inverse of XL by R. And uh, what will be the current angle? Current will be at an angle minus phi. Okay, current at an angle minus phi. So minus phi indicates that current is lagging in nature in inductive circuits. Okay, in uh, Capacitive circuits, impedance will be angle minus phi. Okay, impedance angle will be minus phi, but uh, current will be same plus phi. So plus phi indicates the current is leading. Okay, this uh, difference that you have to understand. Suppose whenever you find in any question paper, current value is given as 10 at an angle minus 50 degrees. That directly says that it is a combination of which it has a R and a L combination. Suppose you are having some current phi at an angle minus 90 degrees amperes. That means current is lagging and how much it is lagging? 90 degrees it is lagging. So current is 90 degrees lagging means it is a pure inductive circuit. But current is lagging but not exactly 90 but it is between 0 to 90 RL combination. Likewise if I am telling current is equal to 3 at an angle 10 degrees. Okay, 3 at an angle 10 degrees. Now tell me what is the type of load? This is RC combination. Okay, because it is not exactly 90 degrees leading somewhere between 0 to 90, therefore it is RC combination. Understood? So the next concept here is now I am interested in finding out what is the power consumed in this circuit. So power in this circuit will be nothing but power consumed by the resistor plus power consumed by the capacitor because these are the only two power consuming passive elements, isn't it? As you know, power consumed in a capacitor is always zero because it has a imaginary reactance. And power consumed by resistor is I square into R. What is it? I square into R or it can also be written as voltage across the resistor into current, current through the resistor. In this way also I can write down. And uh, if you write down the equations for voltages and currents, voltage is given by Vm sin omega t at an angle 0 degrees and current can be written as Vm by z sin omega t plus phi. Plus phi indicates current is leading by some angle plus phi. So if I am supposed to find out the instantaneous power equation and uh, I am supposed to find out what is the average power. So average power consumed by this circuit will be given by V RMS into I RMS into some angle cos phi. Okay. This formula is valid for both RL circuit and RC circuit also. Where cos phi how do you find the value of cos phi? You can find it the value of cos phi from this impedance triangle. From this impedance triangle, you can tell the angle of uh, cos phi will be nothing but adjacent side by I bottom use, which is nothing but R by Z. Okay, cos phi is equal to R by Z. And uh, this cos phi which is there, it is also called as power factor. So nothing to worry. I will clearly discuss about each and every elements about power in the next upcoming video. I hope that you found this video informative and uh, if there is some uh, beginner student who is not much uh, into this kind of subject, maybe he might find a little bit difficulty in understanding because a lot of complex algebra has been involved and a heavy mathematical uh, content is there. But in fact, upon practice, this is going to become a very easy for you. Anyhow, I am going to discuss in depth uh, about each and everything uh, in the next video. That is about apparent power, active power and reactive power, such kind of very very important concepts because before we get into next RLC, 
you must be having a strong and or i can say profound foundation dealing with this kind of angles and complex numbers application in electric circuits in ac circuits so that is the main gist of uh, understanding ac circuits that is you have to be very perfect with the complex number calculations and perfect notation once you are clear with all such things then nothing can stop you in cracking your examination and uh, in the next video probably i will discuss about the powers and all and then i will discuss about some important questions up to now what i have discussed because the more questions you practice more problems you do the more better understanding you will have on the subject then we will go into rlc series circuit because that is a very interesting and very very useful and very very important uh, topic to be analyzed okay thank you for watching